How old are you? I have no idea, but I'm on zombie takeout if that means anything. What's up? Welcome to episode 294 of Zombie Takeout. Zombie Takeout. The B Movie and Cult Movie Podcast. I'm Uncle John. And I'm Scotto. And before we get to this week's movie, we've got a little bit of listener submitted. This is from Bado Winter on Twitter in reference to last week's episode, our review of Real Genius. He said, At Zombie Takeout, you never mentioned Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt was in that movie also. And he posted a photo that you have a link to, and now you're going to open. All right. Uh... It's it's the same wonderment and facial expression, but yeah, I guess it is her. <laughs> it's a photo of um, Ellie Kemper, I think her name is, who plays Kim, yes. uh, Kimmy Schmidt uh, side by side with the actor who played Kent. I think it was in the, you know, he thinks he's hearing God scene or Jesus. And yeah, she's got a similar expression. I wouldn't exactly say it's a resemblance, but the exp- expression is very similar. For a second, I thought we missed that Ellie Kemper was a uh, real genius. <laughs> it was like, son of a bitch. Yeah, same here. Um, but I think she was a little young for that. Well, I think uh, before before we start, we still do have one programming note, of course, um, uh, for next week. Oh, obviously. yeah, yeah. I was going to wait till the end, but if you want to get into that now, yeah. Um, next week, um, we were planning tape heads. That was on the schedule. Um, of course, a couple of days ago, was it two days ago? I think it was two days ago at this point. Uh, we lost the great Gene Wilder. Um, so, of course, we have to do a tribute. Another tribute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you know. As many others have said, fuck you, 2016. And late yeah. 2015, because that's when Lemmy died. You know, 2015 was pretty damn rough. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, you know, it just it's not going to get any better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, we're hitting that age, I think. Everyone's just getting older and yeah. uh, not going to be with us for much longer. Mm-hmm. Enjoy the ride, guys. But we found a, a particularly fitting Gene Wilder movie. Um, I'll announce yes. that at the end of the show, as usual. All right. So on to this week's movie, which is from 2015. <laughs> Speaking of, <laughs> He Never Died. Of course, that brings us to the impromptu plot summary, sponsored by Bingo. It passes the time. And also brought to you by the Times Square Din. Come for the tea. Stay to kill every last motherfucker in the room. Hmm. Except no substitutes. All right. So we have a uh, person who, um, I don't know if he wants to live forever. Hmm. I get the impression he doesn't. to live forever. <laughs> <laughs> that one snuck up on me. You almost stepped on it too, damn it. <laughs> anyway, anyway. <laughs> So yeah, he's um he's an immortal. He's been around for a long time. They established later, um, pretty much since the beginning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's um you know, of course he's collected a, a mass amount of wealth, but he's not quite enjoying it like Russell Nash. Right. He's kind of holed up in a shithole apartment mm-hmm. and um trying to just walk a straight line because it's henry rollins and that's really what he does best right so he could be for all intents and purposes Mm -hmm. you could call him a vampire because he has this uh he's an immortal who drinks blood but it pretty much turns out that that blood is recreational (laughs) in a sense yes but he still needs to hmm how much does he really... I mean, I guess it's it's more of an addiction. That's a good point, yeah, yeah. And he's, you know, trying to just, you know, contain himself and keep himself walled away from the rest of the world because he knows if he gets loose, people are going to die and suffer and, and it, it's not going to end well. Mm-hmm. Well, of course, the real world comes knocking on his door several times. And um, which 
if any of the story sounds absolutely unbelievable, mm-hmm. the most unbelievable part of this entire story is when he's confronted with these hitmen who realize that he can withstand a bullet, mm-hmm. can get punched around, and not really phase him all that much. And then not just going, ha, ha, uh, we, this was a terrible misunderstanding, sir. Yeah, yeah. Um, you go on about your way. Mm-hmm. Uh, instead, they uh, insist on poking at him and needling him and, and trying to get him, or, you know, just get him, period. Yeah. Uh, so much so that they wind up kidnapping his estranged daughter and killing his ex-girlfriend. And uh, they threaten to take her life, of course, if he doesn't really meet them at a drop-off. And I like how this movie proceeds because there is no dramatic okay i'm gonna do what they say and meet them at the dock right. or whatever he just kind of says well eh, fuck it mm-hmm. <laughs> goes about his business anyway and then kind of say you know what i'm gonna get those motherfuckers <laughs> yeah, they don't really establish then, when that change happens either yeah it's not like um it's not like this thing where he gets angry because he doesn't mm-hmm. get angry mm-hmm. But I think he just realizes that all of this was meant to get at him. Right. And somebody, if somebody wants to get at him, he's going to come mm-hmm. and get them back. And the other thing is, of course, the well, genie's out was, of the bottle. Yeah, this is also after he fell off the wagon. Right. He fell off the wagon, so all bets are off. And now he's just going to do pretty much whatever just makes him feel something mm-hmm. at the time. And... uh you could say hilarity ensues at this point. Mm. Now, there was one big issue with this movie that I'm just going to jump into right from the beginning. Sure. It pulls away from the big fight scenes. You know, you have the one where he's sort of looking for trouble and he bumps into these guys with a gun. <laughs> After, like, unsuccessfully trying to cause trouble, which I liked. I know. love that, too. He, looking, he literally goes looking for trouble, you know, dropping money in the mm-hmm. street. And people are, oh, you know, you dropped. Oh, okay. Deliberately bumping up against this big black guy. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Better be careful. So he finally finds this group of, uh, he says they look like 14-year-olds um, with a gun who uh, who want to go at him. And then the camera cuts away. And then there's a thing in a diner where a guy gets thrown through a glass window. But I loved how that... And the camera cuts away. Yeah, no, with the the line of, uh, you look like you're 14. He's like, well, I'm 19. I'll take it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But they cut away from these... Right. But they cut away from these big fight scenes, which got annoying. Uh, Hmm. I think it's two parts... They didn't want to be gratuitous about it, number one. And number two, they didn't probably have the budget. But then there's this big fight scene at the end. It's actually not even a fight scene. It's practically torture porn. Oh, yeah. That they didn't cut away from at all. So, I mean, maybe they were saving up the effects budget for this ending. I don't think there is much effects involved with the... With well, no. The... I mean, aside from the turning foot. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It just seemed odd that they shied away from the violence early in the film and then gave us torture porn at the end. Well, because that led to the big question in the end as to what what was he going to, how was he going to live the rest of his life? Mm-hmm. Uh, the unseen man or God or Satan mm-hmm. or whatever the hell that was. Uh, I think it was death, according to Wikipedia, anyway. Uh, they, they never explain. No, they don't. They never flat out say it, but, but the, death the is consensus is it's entirely. death. I could see it kind of being God, and too. He, so. he kind of rants at, at the, this point being saying well you show up for him but not for me yeah so in other words you're going to take him you're going to let him die but not me that's at least that was my interpretation well it could also be god and it would just be the type of thing that god would do would be to come down and present this choice you can live you know torturing this guy Mm -hmm. and and you know killing taking his life whatever that gets for you or you can save your daughter. Yeah. Now, the other really unrealistic thing about this movie, no cops. That's true. We he racks up cop. an impressive body count, but we never see a cop. <laughs> you know, how does he get away with all of these killings? 
because they're on horseback, probably. <laughs> now, overall, another issue I had was Rollins' performance. I, I, I understand what they were going for, but he was so low-key that I just couldn't get into it. I liked the, the scene where he was uh, off the wagon. The, yeah, yeah, it the, did the get daughter. better. Yeah. I, well, he he has two moments. Yeah, he has the moment where he's off the wagon with his daughter, and he realizes she needs to get the fuck out, <laughs> or yeah. she's going to be his next meal. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the scene at the end where it's just the whole monologue is this isn't fair. Yeah. <laughs> and there are a few things better than a good Rollins rant, and he played it so low-key for most of the movies that it just kind of bugged me that we didn't get that histrionic Rollins that you know we're used to from back in the day yeah it was very very terminator you know mm -hmm. very arnold schwarzenegger what is this what is this you speak of kind of uh role yeah for most of it yeah he's he's sort of um he's sort of a fish out of water by choice yeah you know he, he likes to be on the outside of everything well, it's all about avoiding temptation. Yeah. It's it's the vampire with the soul, which has been done so many other times. Um, our, our title this week references Forever Night. They've done it. Um, you didn't remember, but there's this character on there who he had long hair, and I think he had a beard, and uh, what were, always wore a trench. He was a rock star who was a vampire who lived on rats. Um, <laughs> of course, we have Angel from Buffy, you know, who didn't eat human. Or he, he ate from a blood bank like uh, Jack in this movie. Uh, uh, and then interviewed the vampire. I think yeah. Brad Pitt's character lived off of uh, mice and stuff. For okay, it's been too, too long decades. since I've read or seen that. Um, that might be an interesting one to review and revisit. Maybe. And since it's been like 20-something years since I've read the book, I might like it now. But I like Rollins' low-key uh, performance. I, I think, yeah, I mean... It really sets off when he go when he loses it. <laughs> yeah, it does. But that's only like twice in the movie. Yes. Yeah, we needed more of that. You have two peaks, and then even when he's fighting, he's pretty much, uh, you know, just uh, mm -hmm. passive almost. Yeah. You know, where they're just his move is like just kind of bumping into them, kind of. And I gotta credit the fight choreography because it did look very. Um, matter of fact, like yeah, he's probably, done this a billion times before, and it's no big deal. He wasn't really even trying. They probably only had so much that they could do, you know, with the fight coordinator. But you're right, though; it would have been more entertaining had they actually had the fight scenes. Mm -hmm. Well, but even when he disarms people and just kind of, you know, does the quick takedowns, they were very matter of fact, and you know, like someone of his age would do. You know, he doesn't really break a sweat. He doesn't even really get into it. It's just, yeah, I've done this a billion times. And they pulled that off very nicely. Yeah, this this is a movie you could see them doing. Uh, they could do a lot with this. They could do prequels. They could do so many different things. Because, I mean, just to see how he got into this situation of, you know, living <laughs> as, you know, kind of this isolated uh, mm -hmm. existence of his. Yeah. Like what made him turn away from all of these other things, yeah. and also they could do a sequel because you know where is he going to go from here is the big question in the movie. That's true. Is he going to be you know Kane the Family Man? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, another thing I have to give the movie is that Rollins and the actress who played Andrea, his daughter, have great chemistry. Oh yeah, even the waitress was quirky and you know kind of like just so intrigued with him it mm -hmm. just it worked uh, uh, i liked her but the scene where they're trying to flirt where they're pretty much on a date almost was just cringeworthy <laughs> well of course it was cringeworthy because he was just not you know into it at all mm -hmm. and completely unaware that they were, were on true. a date yeah <laughs> they they were both having different experiences there he was just kind of doing what he was doing and she was on a date <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. But I think she had one of the best lines in the movie, actually, that, uh, are you going to kill another whole room full of people? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said, yes, that just might happen. And it was a nice um, bit of realism, because everybody else in the movie just kind of accepts it. 
Yes. And and she's reacting like a human being. Well, she saw some crazy shit. She's the only mm-hmm. one of the only few people to to survive. Yeah. The crazy I, I, shit. And I did like the scene where he took the pliers and pulled the bullet out of his head. <laughs> Casually explaining, well, if I leave the bullet in, the wound's going to heal over it, and I'm just going to get migraines. So, I mean, i got to pull it out. And admittedly, While Rollins out. <laughs> is one of the few people who could pull that scene off. <laughs> they only could have gotten, like, Ben Stein to, like, <laughs> play... <laughs> bullets in my brain so it'll just heal over although there was a scene where he he tells her you know she can have a million dollars if you know she helps him out with the daughter and we're led to believe that she takes a million dollars from this chest that he has because he's been around forever he's Kane, yeah or as he pronounced it kine which i'm really curious if his pronunciations of uh Cain and abel were correct well he said Kane. You know, or, or yeah, Kyan, and like you would, you would know him as Cain. Yeah, and he he pronounced uh, Abel as Abel. Yeah, with a bit more of a, a bit more phlegm in there, but I can't quite do that. Um, Hobble, I think it was. Yeah. Uh, but but I, I'm really curious if those are the original, you know, correct pronunciations. But but getting back to the million dollars, we're led to believe that she pulls a million from this chest of his and runs off. How hard would it be to carry a million in cash? <laughs> in a hundred dollar bills. A million in hundred dollar bills. So what are we talking about that uh a hundred times a hundred is ten grand. I, I know I did that math. So a hundred hundreds ten grand, uh thousand hundreds a hundred grand, obviously. Mm-hmm. So wow, ten thousand bills. You couldn't carry by hand or, or stick it in your coat. You'd need like a briefcase. It, and then it would just be not safe to go through some neighborhoods, or at least the neighborhoods they're in. Well, yeah, in rough and tumble Toronto. Mm-hmm. Which um, was that where it was set? <laughs> Probably where it was filmed. But I mean, it was where it was filmed. But uh-huh. I mean, Toronto was not that. <laughs> hmm. Oh yeah, I've been to Toronto. It's <laughs> surprisingly nice place, actually. Yes, it is. It's kind of made it a little confusing. Just this for, weird forever night world. <laughs> It's something Canadian, something dark, mm. but not really there. Yeah. Another little nitpick I have. Um, at one point, he starts speaking Latin as he's like preparing for something. The original masses were in Latin because that's what the Romans spoke. True. Not for any other reason. Why would Cain be speaking Latin? I don't know. I'm trying to remember what scene he was speaking Latin in. Uh, he was preparing for the the assault on you know the the mafia to get the daughter back, and he had a knife. I remember that, and he was see, saying something in Latin. I, I don't know if he was it was a prayer or if he was you know blessing the knife or something. I don't know, but it wouldn't make sense for Cain to speak Latin when the masses were only in Latin because that's what the Romans spoke. I forget how many languages he claimed he spoke. Well, he's Cain, so he's been around <laughs> since the beginning. Yeah. So probably every language that has ever existed, practically. And he's he's been all over the world. He's been in China. He's been in France. You know, he well, was... there was a line where it said how many languages he, he mm-hmm. spoke. And I can't, can't yeah. remember the exact number they had said. Speaking of where he's been and, and the question of whether he's a vampire, at the end, Cain makes a reference to impaling many people in Wallachia, this is a clear suggestion that he was known as, or at least associated with, Vlad the Impaler, Prince of Wallachia. Of course, Vlad is, you know, widely mythologized to be Dracula. Dracul. Yeah. So, it, right there, I think, you know, aside from when she, he tells her not to say the word vampire, it pretty much establishes he is a vampire. <laughs> or he's the vampire, because he says he's the only one. If it sucks blood like a duck. <laughs> yeah. And that's not really an original idea. Um, Cain being a vampire is, is fairly common in vampire fiction. He's usually portrayed as the first or second. Some say Lilith was a vampire as well. Really? Who made Cain. Sired him, you know. Well, they show at the very beginning, he has two scars on his on the, his back. Mm-hmm. They also kind of present him as an angel. Um the cover art on Netflix shows him having wings, um, which is weird because Cain and Abel weren't angels. Right. And obviously those two marks on his back would be where wings would have grown out of. Mm-hmm. 
but he never sprouts them in the movie. Well, I they think don't he really lost fit. Them. Okay, that's probable. Um, that's why there's scars there. That's a good point. The actual yeah, wings. A, yeah. Um, they never reference them. Um, it doesn't make sense for Kane to have wings, that, that, or for a vampire to have true. wings. They they never spell that out. It's just tossed out there like that. Like you see him without a shirt on, which is and... a lot of my issue with the movie. They throw a lot at the wall, <laughs> and don't really follow up on a lot of things we usually say movies should be shorter Mm -hmm. this one could have easily had another half hour easily yeah and still and probably would have been made would have improved it you're right Mm -hmm. now there was one thing at the end that bugged me a bit though maybe you can explain it in a way that will make sense to me um when death or god or whatever shows up and he's presented with the choice to um keep killing the mobster or go help his daughter he he's you know obviously very tempted to keep killing the mobster because you know the the blood is taking over, but he sort of on a dime just suddenly decides to go help his daughter. It seemed like a very sudden decision. Well, he was he was there to help in the first place. I mean, the daughter was the part of the reason why he yeah chose to go on the quest. Partial a mm-hmm. part of the reason, but yeah, he was clearly being presented with the choice of what kind of life he wanted to to live. That's why I think the the invisible man mm. is actually God. But the decision was very sudden. Like he's all, you know, ready to kill and then it just drops suddenly and he just walks off to help the daughter like nothing happened. There was well, no struggle there. He had he had a choice to make and he couldn't waste, you know, any more time. I would just would have liked to have seen more struggle or at least a, a bit more um regret when he realized that he had he, the, the right choice was to go help his daughter you know a little more resistance to it <laughs> just telling him that you're going to see that man one day it, it just seemed too abrupt what jumped out at me from that that uh scene did you catch the tele the cell phone number no and they they made a show of it but i didn't notice anything interesting 609 area code oh okay <laughs> I don't know what that is in Canada, hmm. but I know what it is here in the U.S. Yeah. Well, I kind of got the impression it was set in New York, so that would almost fit. Hmm. I mean, that's a long way from New York still. Yeah, but you know, a cell phone, you know, the, the, the area codes on cell phones tend to be different areas. I mean, I'm walking around with my West Long Branch cell phone number here in Chicago. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> and even when you were in Jersey, that's still pretty far away. It was an odd yeah, thing in 908. <laughs> so, you know, a New Yorker having a 609 area code on a cell number is not that unusual if it's set in New York. Ah, uh, they could just be claiming it, but yeah, she's a piney. Yeah. <laughs> All right, on to sequels and remakes. On to sequels and remakes. In October 2014, it was announced that 108 Media were shopping the rights for a miniseries version of He Never Died which would further expand the film's story and history on the central character, Jack. Director Jason Krawczyk, I'm guessing on that, is set to return as the director for the miniseries, and Rollins is attached to return to portray his character, Jack. So we're getting the story fleshed out a bit more, which is good. Hopefully without some of the issues of the movie, which I think were maybe just budgetary and and due to it being a bit rushed. So that could be good. Definitely. I Yeah, I would love to see this more fleshed out um that was one of the cool things with the highlander series was them going into you know flashbacks into different time periods Mm -hmm. to show well even if it wasn't russell nash or you know chris lambert was the other guy (laughs) the highlander's cousin who in the series was good i just there were some issues when he got into the movies (laughs) You know, I, I liked the Highlander series, but the movies with, um, oh, was it Duncan? Yeah, or, or Connor. Or well, Connor was the original, I think. Oh, yeah, 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 Duncan, I think. Yeah, I think it was Duncan McLeod. Um, yeah, um, I can't remember the actor's name. Um, he was good in the series. I liked the series, what I saw of it. Um, the movies with him were... Mm. So this is clearly influenced by that. Yeah, yeah. Prophecy. And lots of vampire fiction. I yeah. mean, if he was... You know, a classic vampire. The story wouldn't be that much different, except they wouldn't be out in the day. But I do like how they they changed it into more 
you know, parallel with addictions. And, yeah, and, that was which, a nice touch. You know, almost made it more recreational than, you know, mm-hmm. than, than an actual life source. Mm-hmm. And I do like that he is the only one of his kind. You know, it's not a vampire who is, you know, has been sired and is sired and all of this. You know, that was a nice twist on the classic. I mean, that's an obvious sequel, of course, is going up against other uh, mm-hmm. other fallen angels or mm-hmm. vampires yeah. or, or demons whatever. or whatever. Underbrains? Underbrains. You talked me up. I'm going to go three. Uh, I recommend seeing this one. It, uh, Rollins gives such a weird performance. Uh, he's not over the top. Uh, he's got two great scenes in it where he does let it all out. Uh, I'm going four. All right, and what have we learned? He was really tearing them apart. (laughs) And I learned that I know you. You were too short. You had bad skin. You couldn't talk to them very well. Words didn't seem to work. They glide when they came out of your mouth. You tried so hard to. And I'll stop there. (laughs) Stop already. (laughs) That was a Rollins piece called I Know You. And I'm actually really curious about something because this is something that was like earth shattering to us like 20 years ago. And I read through it. It really doesn't work anymore. No. And I'm curious. I know most of our audience is about our age, but if we have anybody out there in your early to mid 20s, go to YouTube, look up Henry Rollins. I know you give it a listen. Let us know. Email us or or post it or leave a comment on one of the social media's posts for this episode. Let us know what you think of it. I'm I'm just curious if it works as well for millennials as it did for Gen X. It really spoke to us, man. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So next time when we'll be reviewing Rhinoceros. Yeah. This is yeah. our Gene Wilder tribute. Um, we found a Gene Wilder movie that co-stars Zero Mostel and was written by Ionesco. I know. It's about time we got to do something by Ionesco. I didn't know they made a movie of it. This is about as zombie take out as a movie could possibly get. Right. I bet people are expecting us to do Willy Wonka. Oh, well, yeah. You had to know we weren't going to do Willy Wonka or Young Frankenstein. Yes, that's how I pronounce it. Or Stein. Um, Blazing Saddles. Igor. You know, those were too obvious. Although the Music Box uh, Theater here in Chicago is going to be playing Blazing Saddles. On, nice. I'm really tempted to go see it, even though it's like a Tuesday night. <laughs> It's Blazing Saddles. see Blazing Saddles on the in next the screen. Theater. Yeah. I've never, I, you don't get that chance very often. Mm-hmm. All right. So until then, I mean the next episode, not when you go see Blazing Saddles. Yes. Go to zombietakeout.com. Check out the album art, the episode description. Of course, the episode itself, which you're already listening to. Links to find us on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and YouTube. Links to subscribe via RSS and iTunes. Please leave us a rating and a review on iTunes. We'd really appreciate particularly the rating. They really help us out in the rankings. Maybe we'll actually get recommended on there. Also, if you enjoy the show, spread the word. Give us a little word of mouth. Of course, we appreciate all of the listeners we have, but more would be better. You also find the movie list, every movie we've reviewed so far, and every movie we're going to review. Incidentally, we will be announcing episode 300 next week. In in memory of Gene, too. No, uh, 300 oh. will be different for that. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, but it just happens to be uh, 295, which we, is when we said we'll be announcing uh, episode 300. You also find the request form. If you've got a movie you'd like to hear us review, please leave it on the request form. And this wasn't exactly a request, but just a shout out to Chaz, uh, who mentioned it uh, in an email, said he really enjoyed it and wanted to know our take on it. So there you go. We had had it on the list before Chaz mentioned it, but it was kind of um, interesting timing because I don't think it had been on the list for more than like a day or two when Chaz sent the email. Rollins is a cannibal? We're sold. <laughs> And of course, the recommendations list. I didn't know what to think about this one going in. You know, it's a Rollins movie, but he's he can be a little hit or miss sometimes. And it's, you know, this is a genre that has been done so many times. Mm-hmm. But it was it was cool that they found at least a nugget of freshness to yeah, it. Yeah, know? a new take on it. Uh, plus, also, Chaz said he liked it. And after Fido, I, I you know, had a little bit of trust in it. Because Fido was so amazing. But in this, in oh, this yeah. case, Chaz just said he enjoyed it. He wasn't, like, constantly plugging it like he was Fido. <laughs> yes. Yes, he was He was uh, pretty strongly about Fido. Uh, this one, he just said he enjoyed it. And and it lived up to about that. You know, it, you know, Fido was amazing. This was good. 
Anyway, you can email us on at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 414-368-ZT01 or for the Alphanumerically Challenged. You can go fuck yourself. 414-368-9861. Of course, always remember that you will always be going from the middle of Milwaukee. And until next time... You have a low self-opinion, man. <laughs> and until next time, always remember to never forget wherever you go in life. There, there you are. are. Do you have anything aside from being ambiguous and hostile? What's up? Welcome to episode 249, 294 of Zombie Takeout. Zombie Takeout.